I was a massive fan of the original Shazam when it came out back in 2019. I thought it was a fun, light-hearted, campy-feeling movie that didn't exactly do anything insanely different from other superhero films at the time, but had enough style, humor, and heart to set it apart from the likes of Marvel. So I was excited when it was announced that it would be receiving a sequel. And for the most part, I thought that sequel was pretty good. Fury of the Gods wasn't some insane blow your socks off kind of movie where it's the next greatest comic book film. It's just a simple, fun, campy kind of movie. Unfortunately, however, due to the comic book movies as of recent being pretty disappointing and not exactly impressing anyone, it seems as though no one is going to see this film. On top of the massive shakeup that's going on at DC at the moment, with the next large film literally resetting the entire universe, is now leading to this movie having the lowest opening of any DCEU film to date. Good God. Now, besides that somewhat surprising and kind of saddening news, what did I think of the film? Well, personally, I had a pretty good time with it. Shazam! Fury of the Gods was a pretty decent film, and one that I personally thought was a nice palate cleanser to get the taste of that out of my mouth. I honestly don't have very much to say about this film because of how simple and in some ways unremarkable it is, but I'll do my best here. The plot of the film revolves around the daughters of Atlas, who are getting revenge on the Shazam family for essentially using their father's stolen powers, and so the family has to deal with them as the conflict escalates between the two throughout the film. The story was, by all accounts, pretty standard, with the occasional interesting thing to happen here and there, but it wasn't really that memorable. All the actors, though, did fine jobs. Zachary Levi is still a fun lead and did a great job, still doing his man-child-ish performance from the previous film. And, um, uh, everyone else was pretty much fine as well. No one really had any bad performances, and no one really had any standout ones either. Anyways, with the amount of unnecessary humor being injected into most comic book films nowadays, I was a little worried about this film, but I'm happy to say that that was not the case, luckily. The humor from the first film is present here, and very much appreciated, as there isn't too much of it, and it's all timed well enough that it doesn't get in the way of serious moments. And there were quite a few jokes that got legitimate chuckles out of me, more so than other comic book films as of late. Action as well was pretty good. Although there wasn't anything that truly stood out, it was entertaining to watch and there were a few moves here and there during them that I thought were pretty cool. However, a big thing I do want to mention is the fact that the production value for this film looks extremely good, with it only having a budget of 120 million. To put that into perspective, Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania's budget was 200 million and Thor Love and Thunder's was 250 million. So with how terrible those films can look in comparison, I am shocked that Fury of the Gods looks as good as it does with just 120. And even the first film, now to think about it, with that being only 100 million. I just want to congratulate David F. Sandberg for using his budget extremely well. But with all that being said though, unfortunately the film still has a couple issues here. One has to do with the character development here in the film, or lack thereof. Now, Billy, I think, is alright for the most part. I like his small arc of having to respect everyone's individual goals and their desires, and fully understanding his responsibility as a superhero, and for him to make a certain decision at the end of the film was a good way for him to learn about that responsibility and stuff. His arc was alright in the film, I liked his. Unfortunately, I can't say that about the rest of the cast, who for the most part remain pretty much the same as they did in the first film. With the amount of different characters that are here, it was inevitable that not everyone was going to be further developed. I mean, giving Freddy a love interest was really sweet, but... I'm not sure it really did anything for his character. And the rest of the Shazam family are kind of just there. Like, each of them have a couple moments from time to time that I enjoyed, but at the same time, there's not very much to them that would make me care about them individually. Like, if one of them had died in the film, I really wouldn't have cared that much since I still know virtually nothing about them beyond surface level traits. And I will say that that feeling was made worse since the kid actors are maybe Maybe in like 10% of the whole film. For the most part, we follow their adult hero forms, so for the whole movie, you kind of forget that they're still pretty much just kids until towards the end, which creates more of a disconnect between us sympathizing with them as characters, and it was just weird. The villains as well were pretty uninteresting. I mean, I thought the twist involving Lucy Liu and Helen Mirren was a neat one, but at the same time, neither of them really showed enough personality to really get me to latch onto them. They were kind of on the same 
same level as the other guy from the first film, where I could understand their motivations, but there really wasn't enough to get me truly invested into what they were doing. And hell, the stakes here were surprisingly low. I mean, I don't think a single person in the Shazam family got seriously injured. They all pretty much walk away scot-free from this whole thing. I mean, something does happen in the finale, but any consequences from it are pretty much nullified in like less than five minutes of it happening. The first film also had low stakes, but the main conflict was with this guy who just wanted to get revenge on the wizard and his champion. And that was it. That was the whole point of the film. It was a low stakes thing. But here though, there's literally what could possibly be a world ending event going on. And the fact that the stakes aren't raised to that much of an extent is kind of weird. So yeah, this film should have either had someone in the main cast die in my opinion, or at least get seriously injured where there would be long term consequences. But looking past all of that though, I am overall still pretty positive about the film. However, it seems that most other critics are not not, and I think that has to do with some of the other comic book films coming out as of recent not being that great. And I really can't blame anyone for not being that positive about the film. It's still connected to the overall DCEU, but it doesn't matter anymore when everything is going to be reset by The Flash. That feeling is even made worse by the end credit scene, still trying to get this tied into the rest of the DC films. When again, that might not even matter with the restart, so then like, why even bother with that? And with faith in comic book films seeming to be at an all-time low, I think Shazam 2 just came out at the wrong time unfortunately, and with other comic book movies with much more hype coming out soon, I think it was doomed to fail. But at the end of the day, Fury of the Gods wasn't trying to be some genre-defining piece of art. It was just a fun, run-of-the-mill superhero film that was just fun, nothing more, nothing less. And although that was one of the things that made the first film so good, there were still a few elements that made it unique. Here though, everything is just more average, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but we're at a point with comic book films where slightly above average just isn't enough. Audiences have been burned too many times with recent films, and unfortunately Shazam is seeming to take the brunt of this response, with its abysmal performance at the box office right now. But with all that out of the way, personally, I went into Fury of the Gods expecting a sequel that would retain the campiness of the original, and that's exactly what I got. Did this movie do anything insanely unique? No, but it did its job at being a lighthearted superhero flick that I had a good time watching. Now, I do think that the issues in the film take away from it slightly to where I would put it below the original, but not enough that it absolutely ruins the film. I do hope going forward that future DC projects are much more creative than this, that they go all out on being weird or out of the box, rather than playing it safe. This film was DC playing it safe, and unfortunately, that's not what they needed now. They already did that with Black Adam. But Shazam! Fury of the Gods is a decent time that, although isn't the greatest piece of superhero media ever, is a solid enough time to be decent fun. So with that, I give the film a very positive 6 out of 10.